to let people get in here and, and get the coffee, but we do want to get going um, on this presentation. Jumping the mobile shark. You may need to jump into a mobile cloud data first world, okay? Um, we'll get back to that title slide in a second. You're probably all wondering what this is about. Um, first of all, I want to introduce myself. I'm Greg Curtin, founder and CEO of Civic Resource Group. We're a uh, smart government solution provider. Been around for over a decade, working exclusively in the public sector. And importantly, I'm also a member of the World Economic Forum Future of Government Council, have been for about the last eight years. Uh, no small order charting the future of government across the globe. And it, it is important for this because what we do is we put out, uh, we recently put out the Future of Government Smart Toolbox. And we're going to be starting our next two year term. And I encourage all of you to contact me, give me ideas, case studies, examples, questions on where the future of government is going. We compile this, we do workshops around the globe. We try to get it on the global agenda, how to make government better. And my specific role is the digital guy on that council. So this is great. This is a, a, a wonderful place to start uh, that conversation. Um, before we get going, I, I do want to thank uh, co-sponsors for this panel. The Ballard Group, I got Marini Ballard in the, the audience there. They do uh, all sorts of technology, cloud testing and the like. And SOSTA, I don't know if Allison Walton's here, but they have a booth. Please go and visit it. New cloud um, testing and optimization, all right on, on point for this. Um, so with that said, let's jump right in. You're going to have a lot of cheesy remarks today, so we'll keep it that. Got the Fonz up there. What on earth does this have to do with technology, jumping the mobile shark? Well, if any of you, and I'm looking around the room, it looks like most of you remember the show Happy Days. Um, the term jumping the shark actually comes from that show. And it, it actually is a negative connotation. When you've jumped the shark, you've gone so far down a path uh, doing the same old thing, you've run out of good things, that you've jumped the shark. And this classic uh, episode of Fonzie jumping a shark while water skiing was sort of the beginning of the end for that great show, Happy Days. And that term has come to mean you've stepped over, you're going downhill. And I actually want to bring that back to this conversation because one of the goals of this specific session, and, and wonderful that the, our, our group of the, the state CIOs on the advisory panel said, yeah, let's get out there. Let's really challenge the people. Let's get them excited about doing something new, innovative, doing more than simply putting out simple, standalone mobile application. And that's going to be the theme of this session. We're going to talk, and I really want to get it interactive, save some time for questions, use the collaborative brains in this room, um, as Russ was saying, all you spear tips out there, to talk about how do we really go more than simply mobile. So with that in mind, we also thought, though, that we'd pull this into a positive connotation, jumping right in, jumping the shark, if you will. So what does it really mean, jumping the mobile shark, as we, as we get into this? Let's start with the mobile app. And I'm going to be very, very frank and really disruptive and tell you, if you are doing mobile apps, you have jumped the shark. Meaning, you're dead in the water. If all you are doing is mobile apps, you've jumped the shark, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have done that. And we saw the wonderful State of California mobile gallery. I'm going to pull that up later. You have to start somewhere. Think back, all of us, the beginning of the websites, right? It was first, we had to have a web page. Well, then a web page was virtually useless. We had to have a website. And a website became kind of useless. Then we had to have a content managed site. And now that's gone. Then you had to have a web portal. Now you have to have a web system. That's the evolution, staying in front of that. We're literally just at that point in the mobile world with mobile apps. Everybody had to have a mobile app. Three million mobile apps out there. You see that graph at the bottom. 
I'm going to read this to you. Sorry, it's a little, it's a little small. 1.3 million available on Google Play. 1.2 million available at the Apple Store. About 300,000, 200,000, and less than that on the Windows App Stores and the Amazon App Stores. Still, 3 million. That was July. I guarantee you that's upwards of 4 million right now. Are you really going to compete with those 3 million mobile apps out there? Come on, folks. We're government. We're excited in this room, but are those folks really going to go and find you instead of Facebook, LinkedIn, Uber? Okay? Think about that. The, the cartoon down on the right-hand side there, I love this one. Big, huge, incredible HD television. And the comment is, only the picture is high definition. The shows are still as bad as always. If all you're doing is providing a mobile outlet for the same old thing, you're not really moving into the mobile world. You're providing a mobile app. What we really want to do is talk about shifting to mobile connected experiences. Think about that, experiences. And I love this, this, this work brilliantly, um, thinking about where if you were in the room uh, when Carlos talked about uh, moving into this new innovative mobile world where everything is mobile and he talked about spending a weekend tracking what he's done with mobile. Um, and then Sanjay came on and again sort of supported that theme of moving into an experiential world. We're mobile, not the mobile app. That's what we're shifting to. So what is mobile? Let's start thinking and shifting the way we think about mobile. And again, I'm going to keep coming up with this theme. If you're doing Simple, standalone mobile apps, you've jumped the shark. Mobile is everywhere. It's everything. There is virtually nothing you can think of today that is not being mobilized. People, utilities, cars. The first Wi-Fi enabled cars are coming out. The first driverless cars are starting to come out. Business, field workers, huge area for us thinking about uh, government and especially at the state and local level. Emergency response. Even sharks are mobile. That's, go online if you want to do it right now. Just check it out. There's about a hundred or more apps to track sharks around the world. It's fascinating. But even sharks are mobile. Everything is mobile. Again, stop thinking about mobile being my smartphone and thinking about mobile being the world we live in. This is the new digital world. And I want to call out a few people as we're, as we're doing this. Um, Tim Garza, AIO for the uh, Natural Resources Agency, CIO for the Department of Water Resources. When we were chatting about this, he, he was saying, we've got to stop thinking mobile and really everything's digital. It's just all around us. Mobile smartphones is one way to access that digital world. We, as the government practitioners, we have to start thinking about how we provide all of that. So let's think a little bit about this. Google Glass, field workers, road sensors, again, smart cars, satellite, smart watches and the like. I, 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 if, I, if I kept going with the kinds of things that are mobilized, we'd be spending all day here. Um, I've got my smart watch on. I'm actually gonna, I've got my, believe it or not, my, my wife has fun buying things for me, my smart cufflinks. Believe it or not, I know, jeez. Smart cufflinks. I'm wearing my, do I have it? My step counter, heart counter. That's why I'm walking. Whenever you see anybody anywhere walking like this, that means they've got a Fitbit on or they've got a smart counter or something on, right? I've got that on. And I love this one. Actually, I've got my smart sunglasses. I lied. They're not smart sunglasses, but just yesterday I saw a wonderful article about an app that will track your sunglasses for you if you lose them, and I can't tell you how many I've lost. The point being, everything is mobile. We are in this room have more mobile devices attached to us than ever before, and that's what we have to start taking advantage of. And even more importantly, think about the world around us. I love some of these. It should be the internet of nouns. We talked about the internet of things. It should be the internet of nouns, person, place, or thing. Every one of those, people, places, things, are being connected, are being mobilized. They are opportunities for us to connect to, to provide government services, to engage citizens. That's what we have to think about. 
By 2020, and this is just one statistic, 2020, 50 billion, that's with a B, and if you read some other sources, it's even more, 50 billion connected things out there. In around 2008, 2010, the number of connected things and devices outstripped the population of the planet. Okay, this is the world that we're living in. We're revolutionizing business, households, and especially governments. That's what we're here for today. How do we take advantage of this? How do we work in it? How do we really move into the mobile world? Jump into the mobile world in that positive way. So, we're ready to jump in. And no, these are not pictures of any of your state agency CIOs. Although, although a number of people out there when we do this presentation, literally, they're about that fearful. I still get that fear factor. I am scared of the cloud. I am scared of mobile. How do we do it? What do we do? So that's one of the other charges today that we really want to think about is to try and give you some takeaways to be thinking about from your agency perspective, state, local, wherever, of how to think about changing um, from simply doing mobile to becoming mobile and mobilized. So let's jump right in. Some keys to success. And we really boiled this down. Um, the, rest of the, the, the rest of the education sessions today will flesh out some of these specific areas. So this is a nice setup for that. We wanted to boil this down, thinking about leaders, managers, CIOs, and the like. What do you need to do to take back to your folks, your people, your agencies, your departments, to say, here's how we have to start thinking about jumping into the mobile world in a positive way. Strategic and tactical. And this, again, goes back to um, Carlos's opening remarks about having a strategic plan. And again, the importance of a plan isn't to have a document, a plan. The importance of that plan is to get the buy-in so that people understand what they're doing, where they're going, what the direction is. And this is very new. There aren't a lot of digital or mobile uh, plans out there. It's something new. What do you need to do creating your overall digital strategy? Integrated web and mobile, and I'd say integrated web, mobile, and everything else. That's sort of the core feature of a really robust digital plan is that you're not saying we're going to do mobile here, we're going to do social here, we're going to do our websites here, we're going to have our open data here. It's that you're doing a digital plan. Think from inside out, everything together, never, never separate. Digital content and communications. What kind of content does your agency have that's valuable? What kind of content can you put out there? How do you put it out there in a form that is accessible in the mobile digital world? Not a PDF, right? How do I get that information, content? When I was pulling up my smartphone just now, I got a message from Starbucks saying, if I come and buy a grande latte right now, I get 50% off. That's really good content. They know the digital world. I'm tapped in here, right? That's where you have to be thinking. Governance, and this is critical. This is critical, especially for the managers, the execs, CIOs out there. What are we thinking about? Right now, the vast majority, and I'll just be real frank and honest, and you can sort of look, look internally, the vast majority of government mobile apps are single department, single service, sort of a very small slice. And that may be good in terms of starting the process. But the citizens, the businesses, the users don't think in terms of that single small slice of government. Start thinking about how you can govern something cross-departmental, cross-jurisdictional. We're going to have a bunch of case studies that I'm going to bring out to show some of these. And even, heaven forbid, working with the private sector, public-private partnerships. How do we govern? How do we set those up? Social media strategies. Um, you heard Sanjay and others, really social and mobile start to become, you know, just SOMO, MOSO. It's the same thing, everything. If you're mobile, it's social. If you're social, it's mobile, right? They should not be separate. Data integration strategies. This is huge. You saw Sanjay and Carlos both talk about the incredible troves of data that we have in every government agency. How do we start bringing it together? How do we start thinking about mobilizing it, enabling it 
for more than simply back end, back office analytics. We're going to talk about that more. Style and language guides, getting right down to sort of tactics, which is great. I saw at the California level, got guides, standards, that's wonderful. Staff training, get the buy-in top to bottom, top to bottom. These are really the hallmarks of some of that technical and strategic pieces. Technical, system architecture and cloud infrastructure. And we're going to really talk top level here because you have some excellent presenters, companies um, here today at this conference that are hitting those kinds of technical pieces. But it's really important. Platform approach. Carlos Ramos specifically said we are moving to mobile platform. Notice it didn't say mobile apps. Apps come out of the platform. Mobile platform. Start thinking platforms and services, not software and hardware. I've had numerous meetings with really innovative CIOs and managers. And when they get it, they start talking about, I don't want to own hardware. I don't want to own software. What I want to own are the data, the business processes, and the engagement with my customer, the citizen, the business, other agencies. It's a huge shift in thinking. Platforms and services as opposed to hardware and software. And that really is the new mobile cloud data world. Open data architecture and frameworks. So that if you've got good data, good content, you can start lighting it up over mobile, lighting it up through sensors, lighting it up, right? But you have to have that open data architecture and frameworks in place. And there are numerous of those out there. So the idea is finding the ones that fit your strategy. Cross device, cross system, always, always, always. I think that's now becoming self-evident. Why would we only have something available on an Apple iPhone and not the zillions of Android devices or vice versa, all right? That simply is, it's just downright rude to your customer. Darn, I can't get it because I have the wrong, I chose the wrong device, cannot happen, especially not as government service providers. Security and device management, again, big, big, big. Sanjay was talking about that. VMware clearly does um, some excellent work there, as do others that are here today. Choosing your security and device management path. Lots of options. Making sure you're going down one of those paths is an important piece. Data, 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 data. We live in a big data world. We live in an open data world. That's really one of the things that's been driving a lot of the government innovation, certainly in technology. Get your data prepared. Now again, kudos to the state of California coming out, for instance, with their GIS portal, where they actually started to make data enabled and available to other agencies and the public. There's a ton of work being done out there in the open data movement, and I think that's wonderful. It's great. I'd suggest you have to take it to the next step though. Great, opening the data is one key piece. What are we gonna do with the data? Can we start mixing the data together? Can we start thinking of new ways to use it? Cloud transition. So you're gonna hear that all day today. That's gonna to become the new mantra. You have to start moving to the cloud, right? Everybody is. The state of California actually is ahead of the game in many regards to other states as are many of the local agencies in California. There is no one and only cloud path. There are lots, and there's lots of different places to start. Cloud infrastructure, cloud platforms, and the big missing piece right now, which is where you can really innovate, the cloud solutions and applications. How do you start moving down that path? What's the right first step for your agency, your department? Um, again, just finding that first step is the critical first step. You don't have to do it all at once. Right? That's what scares most CIOs. I can't just transition everything in a day to the cloud. Start. Start in one place and move forward. And then new cloud approaches for testing, quality assurance, support, because that's the new world we're all living in. Right? So you've got to line these things up. And finally, and this is the big piece, and I'm going to give a, a shout out to, uh, again, a couple of um, Tim Gars, again, Joe Panara, who could not be here. Um, state CIO for the Department of Corrections, who, who, who is at a cybersecurity summit in Las Vegas right now. So it's good. we've got competing, um, there's a lot happening out there. As I said in the email, I'm questioning that Vegas cybersecurity. I'm not sure about the connection between those two. Um, 
But again, the idea of a cultural shift, you gotta change your organization's behavior, you gotta change the culture, and the shift in simplest terms, and there's a, a, a lot of different ways to put it. Think about changing from services to servicing, okay? The mindset in government is we create a service, we own a service, and we make that available to the public. In the mobile world, right, where, wherever we are, as a person, as a user, as a citizen, as a beneficiary, right? We want that service available to us. So think about servicing your customer, servicing your clients, wherever they are, in whatever environment they're in, and whatever they're experiencing in that point of time, okay? I, I, I think any of you that have ever tried Uber, it is an incredible example of that idea of servicing integrated soup to nuts, mobile data, wherever you want it, where you need it, when you want it. It's really interesting just taking away that it's a, uh, basically a, a car ordering service. It's incredible. Leverage related services programs, data content. That's an idea of thinking beyond the form that I have today that I'm going to move to a nice, easy, thumbable mobile application. That's great, but that doesn't get you where you wanna go. How do we start taking that and saying, wait, there are other departments, there are other services, there's other content that would actually make for a much richer mobile experience, digital experience for the user. Can we put that together in a package? Can we make it an integrated program? Can we create a new experience for your mobile citizen, your digital citizen, your end user? That's the key, and that takes a lot of collaboration a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity, which should be the fun part of this. Um, I think it was Scott said, beware when I say I have an idea. I think you wanna actually say to everybody, hey, great, we want those ideas. This is what we need to be doing to move into the mobile century, the 21st century, as, as Carlos was saying. Finally, stop simply replicating single standalone services on separate mobile platforms. That should be at least the base takeaway from today is don't do it. It's the easy way out. If you're doing that, you're going to be left behind. You will, you will as a department or as an agency, you will have jumped the shark. Great, one more simple mobile app out there that I can fill in a form. Make that your starting point for an integrated mobile experience. Now you're off to something. And then finally, implement, we talked about data. Data runs throughout this. Implement data aggregation distribution, and importantly, sharing strategies. If you're gonna open up the data, we talked about that, that's the first step. Now start thinking about how do we actually share the data? How do we get better data back by using the data that my department owns and creates to actually leverage and start a new data collection effort by combining it with another department? Or, even importantly, getting all that data from the users out there and even in the future, what's, con what's, what's noted as the exhaust data out there in the cyber world, which is all of that data that nobody really captures, collects, or structures. Social media data, data about cell phone usage, um, all that data, that exhaust data. Is there something that we, as the government, can start using that for to actually provide better services, to provide better analytics? Absolutely. Okay, what I wanna do here is go into, dig into some case studies. And again, this was a, a great idea or sort of the charge that came from the advisory board for the mobile government conference was, let's not just pull state of California, um, state agency, let's pull case studies throughout the state, whatever level. There's good sharing. The idea is, hey, all government agencies, even if you're not in the same domain or subject area, all of you can be getting ideas. So we went through and we could, be, we could be here all day with these case studies. So I set up a number of case studies, many of which we've worked on, um, and basically to show you that kind of integrated effort, not just mobile apps. So you're gonna see some interesting stuff here. But first, we definitely wanna shout out the case study, um, and we had a wonderful presentation on it during the, the, the intro, it was great. California State Mobile Gallery, okay, excellent. If you haven't visited it yet, go there, visit it, some great stuff. And again, as a state distribution and promotional vehicle, 
It's huge. That's great. That's how you can start competing with those three million um, one-off mobile apps out there. I'm going to go through some of these case studies, and I want to save a bunch of time um, for some discussion. But if anybody has a, a question while we're going through this, um, please jump in or hold the questions, and we'll dig into it. So first, starting at the level of resource management and conservation. This is Civic Connect Water, and I want to um, stop here for a second because this application was actually originally funded by the state of California, the Department of Water Resources, through an innovation grant a few years ago to do something around water conservation, drought management, water management, using new technologies. We don't know what it should be, but we really should be using new technologies. And it is incredible um, technology. It is actually in full production now with the city of San Diego throughout their entire uh, utilities water management. And in terms of mobilization, you see here some of these pieces. Field workers can go out with their tablets, their mobile, and actually do inventories of conservation for large customers, can actually find information about water usage on, at a point where they are. Um, we're pulling satellite imagery, infrared imagery that automatically classifies vegetation and ground cover, all brought in combined with customer usage, customer information databases to figure out what should any given customer or point on, on a point of land, piece of property, what should the water usage be based on historical weather patterns, historical usage, and tying in state and local ordinances around water usage. It is a really incredibly um, sophisticated, powerful uh, technology platform that is now in the midst of moving into an entirely fully cloud environment, which will then enable it to be given to anybody at a very cost-effective manner, rather than trying to replicate it one by one by one at an incredibly high cost. So it's a great instance, a great example of kind of bringing this whole digital world together and delivering a technology platform that provides incredible value to the business users, productivity, efficiency, and big value to the end users as well, and hopefully um, ends up in conserving and managing water better. And the uh, the, the reports from San Diego are it is doing all of that. I just presented this last week at the Houston, in Houston at the American Water Summit, and folks are all over it again. Um, and again, good for the state of California for thinking that through. Originally, it did win the Internet Project of the Year a few years back. Really good instance of the digital world. Smart cities. And this is a biggie. You've all heard it. You're seeing stuff. It's one of the hot topics out there. Smart cities. So we got a Santa Monica project, and this is really an innovative, first-of-kind project. In a nutshell, City of Santa Monica, and this is through federal highway dollars, grants again, a lot of the innovation out there is through grant funding, federal highway dollars to basically put sort of an umbrella platform over, under, throughout the City of, Calif uh, the city of Santa Monica to connect all of their disparate data sources that might impact how a person might move throughout the city. So some of the obvious ones, the transit, they have a bus line, we have the road system, started to tie in parking, they've got bike share and car share, they have a new pedestrian and bicycle path throughout the city. Now they're even starting to go and extending it to let's talk to our business uh, groups, our economic development um, associations throughout the city, connecting all that data so that any person, a visitor, a resident, a business, a driver, can understand what the best way to move around in Santa Monica is, what they can do when they're in Santa Monica, and how they can actually save the planet. It's a sustainability measure. It's a transportation demand management measure. Um, very, very, again, sophisticated, sophisticated platform technology with the idea being it will go out to any and all users via mobile apps, via kiosks, they have a kiosk program throughout, digital signage, park here, tied in with the regional and local transit agencies, including Metro, so that all that information goes out into the cyber world and is digested and usable by the users in the way that they want to where they are at that point in time. And then tying back into the, the governance idea, Santa Monica is also now 
talking with some of the third party providers, Waze, Google, Uber, who see this as, hey, we'd like to work with you on this. We don't know how, but there's data in them that are hills, right? They want that back. And so Santa Monica is saying, great, let's actually have an, a discussion about this instead of us simply handing everything over to you. And then third in the governance, I have down here in the uh, left-hand corner, the experience Fort Lauderdale, wonderful kind of collaborative sharing. City of Fort Lauderdale came out, met with Santa Monica, met with Metro and says, we want to do that. Can we share that platform? Is there a way that we can do it at a, at a better cost? And we all sat down and agreed, absolutely, why not? Different type of setting, it's being driven in Fort Lauderdale by their um, tourism organizations. Same, same mobile web data cloud platform. Um, really wonderful example uh, of bringing all that together. Regional information sharing. LA Metro, LA County, LA Tourism, actually a bunch, um, a bunch more down, down there as well. Um, and this is one, and we're, we're, we're now going into yet another phase of this, and it's wonderful. Again, thinking about LA and LA County, huge, massive area, geographic, people, everything out there. So the Metro, the transit agency, wants to promote usage of their new public transit. We're investing billions of dollars. How do we promote usage? City and County of LA want to promote events, activities throughout the city and county, and especially events and activities that are in economically underserved areas, may not get the kinds of promotions they usually get, and that are active, meaning people don't necessarily have to drive. They can walk. They can experience in that way. LA Tourism needs to promote the area for tourism. Bringing it all together, letting them all come up with their best data sources, bringing it together through, again, a cloud mobile data platform that then pumps in all of that together and creates new experiences that can go directly out to the user, but also goes right back to those partners. So we have um, LA Tourism, for instance their culture and community calendar and activities is driven by the back-end database and that becomes their most used um, information source. Metro starts tying in all of their transit promotions around doing things. What a great way. Take the bus to do something, not take the bus. It's kind of a hard sell, just take the bus, take the train. Take it to do something. And you start to get this whole program around that cloud data mobile solution as opposed to a service specifically. They're servicing the citizens. And tied to this is also another program I didn't have because we, we've got so many case studies, um, but I, I want to mention it because it's a real good one in terms of um, actual impact. Working with Metro and these agencies as well, Metro started taking this and they've created what's called geosocial mapping. Again, a cloud-based solution that they're using. They use it specifically when they're going out with their projects, large construction projects, new transit, new highways, and the like. And it's a, a real elegant, easy to use way to see the alignment, see what's going to happen, what's going to happen in my backyard, and actually provide public commenting, public input. Um, and the one we bring up, and this is a real example, building a highway out in the high desert corridor out in the Antelope Valley, big 60 mile long highway, goes through the desert, and the alignments were out there, and they were done with most of the environmental, most of the engineering. And some user out there puts in, via mobile, a picture and a comment and automatically geolocates some petroglyphs in the hills that had been missed during the environmental. That one picture and comment, hey guys, do you know that these ancient petroglyphs are here within about X, and we could do the we could do the measurement geospatial of the of the alignment. Don't think this is really a good idea. That one picture saved order of hundreds of millions of dollars had that alignment started to be put in place, as opposed to simply moving it and making sure that it was protected. Um, that's one of those sort of moments in time where all right, that really is powerful, and they use that all the time. Outdoors and trails, I think this is an area where some of the best mobile data stuff is being done. And again, uh, this is a state of California project that we're just launching right now with the California 
Coastal Conservancy, the California Coastal Commercial, uh, uh, Commission, and the California Coastal Trails Association to create an explore the coast mobile experience. And wonderfully, they didn't say a mobile app. It's a mobile experience. Let's think about how to do this right. Mobile, kit, whatever it is. We're taking all the data, state provided data, um, opening it up, really making it um, easy to use, easy to share, getting the experiences from the folks that are experts on this, the, the, the people that live and work in those areas, and then in terms of sustaining this, putting it out that local partners will actually be the content and data curators of this Explore the Coast experience. A real good example, again, of that idea of creating a digital experience, not a mobile app. And once we get that out there, there'll be more and more partners who will have good content to create, to put into that experience. And in the future, I mean, we're talking about all sorts of interesting stuff. Think about the RVs driving down the coast with their Wi-Fi and mobile connections and what they can get out of this. I mean, there's some really incredible things once you start thinking, all right, let's think about this as an experience, a platform, as opposed to a mobile app. Parking. How am I doing on time? I want to make sure we have time. I don't have it in front of me. Just want to do a quick time check. Okay, we got about a minute or two. I'll go through these very quickly. Parking. And again, two here, we got San Diego and San Francisco. This is a killer. We live, in, we live in California. Anybody who hasn't experienced traffic, transit, parking problems, I don't know where you've been, right? The idea down in San Diego, again, they even put, let me, actually, I'm gonna step back. Challenges, think about this. Their original RFP they put out said, develop an iPhone mobile app. That was kind of the RFP. And we actually went in there and said, we're gonna, is that, is that really what you want? Or is it that you want it to be available on somebody with an iPhone? Oh yeah, that's what we want, right? You get off in this sort of, we want an iPhone app. No, what we really want is we just want to make sure people can get it through an iPhone and an Android and everything else. And it changed the whole way of thinking, again, to starting to think about San Diego, collecting the data, starting to engage the partners, Sandag, the city, the county, the port, to provide all the data that they really need to actually impact parking as opposed to providing a parking app. Okay, I, here's parking. I don't know if there's any parking available. I don't know how to get there, but there's a parking lot over here to, where are you, what are you doing, you're coming in. By the way, there's 20 spaces available here. There's a discount because there's a Padres game on tonight. And by the way, if you wanna avoid the traffic, because we've pulled in traffic and transit information, you might wanna get coffee after the game and stay a while because the traffic dies down at 9, 9 p.m an integrated mobile experience as opposed to a mobile app. And then finally, I'm gonna jump through this one. Um, this is a, again, with LA Metro, asset management system that they are using to manage inventory, track, and create basically their source database for their bus stops. Sounds kind of simple. 30,000 plus bus stops in the county of LA, each bus stop with multiple transit providers stopping at the stop, doing things, and they don't have all the information. It would have taken 10 years to go out and do this manually, stuff that data. We created a mobile asset management system that their surveyors go out with the tablet, geoposition directly on the mobile, on the, on the bus stop, get absolute pre precise um, location to 12 inches, right? And then they can do the inventory right there. It has a shelter, it has, uh, it has a newsstand, it's got um, advertising, it's on a curb that's painted red. They start doing the inventory right there, photo, video, and on top of it, we have accessibility in here, they're using it to automatically at least get a baseline assessment of are those bus stops accessible per ADA. They're being sued, as are many agencies for ADA noncompliance. This now starts to save them tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, because they can now start to assess and evaluate and actually target, wow, these stops need remediation. These don't. Um, an incredible system, again, pulling everything that they already have into a cloud mobile data platform. Um, Okay, good. So 
just to sort of tease you, and again, these case studies were just a few of the ones we were able to pull. There's many, many more out there. And you can see the, the hallmark of those case studies were they were integrated. They were digital platforms. They weren't standalone mobile apps. Mobile apps may have been one of their outputs, but that wasn't where we started designing a mobile app. Where we started was developing the digital, the mobile, the data platform that can feed mobile apps, can feed kiosks, can feed in-bus um, signage, can feed in-dash readers. That's the idea. This is just a little teaser of some of the things that are coming soon. Um, you've probably heard about some of them. There's not a lot of implementations. And actually, we are bringing these to market over the next six months or so. This is all patented technology right out of Silicon Valley. Augmented reality. And we've heard about that. Not a lot out there. Built right into your mobile applications and devices. And we think about it. Think about it in the government sector. If we could actually, that augmented reality that tells us what's in this building. What are the plans behind this building? What's happening underneath these streets? Where are those sewer lines and um, electronic lines? I mean, it's incredible when you start thinking from what we know as the domain experts, what we can do with that. Mobile pointing. Sounds simple. But think about it again, you've got a field worker or a user out there who can take the mobile device and simply point it. Okay, that's a lectern located in Hyatt, right? As long as the data are there and it's located at this geo position, you can start to point at the bus stops. We're building that into that asset management platform. Um, it can search, so you can do a whole point and figure out what's in the room. I mean, this is incredibly powerful stuff, again, dependent on the fact that Everything around us is going to be connected and be providing data before we know it. And then finally, the mobile teleporting, just kind of a fun way to think about that if you're sitting in your office in Sacramento or maybe you're out in the field and you actually want to figure out, okay, what's going on somewhere? What's my field worker doing to actually be teleported there where it's not a video feed? It's actually taking that augmented reality and everything and giving you the experience as if you were physically there as you're walking through a digitized map of that area. Again, dependent on the fact that everything around us is going to be data and digitized. Um, really, really, it's cool, but what I want you to do is think about, great, taking that cool factor and making it useful, providing better citizen engagement, better accessibility, better connectivity. So get out there and ride that mobile shark to end the, to end the presentation. I think really the idea here um, was to kind of get you excited about this, thinking about taking that next step beyond simply mobile. Um, be thinking out there. Let's not be out here 10 years going, OK, we're almost in the 21st century. Let's get ahead of it. Let's have government get out there in front. This is some pretty incredible stuff and some pretty heady times in terms of the available technologies um, that you can use out there. I know we're running late because of the initial session, but uh, questions, challenges. I'd love to hear from some of the folks, like what's a challenge that you have in your agency or department kind of getting to go mobile? Anybody? Jump in, folks. This is your chance. Or ask about the, the case studies. Question, yeah. If your uh, water app, uh, the agency that I work for is uh, regulating the drought. Uh, it's, it, would be, <laughs> it would be something. In, in, fact, in fact, as part of its original um, specs were built in, and I, and I hesitate to say this in groups, although this is government, was the ability to either um, to incentivize or disincentivize, punish water wasters, potentially incentivize um, water savers. And it actually is a water management and a drought management um, application kind of at its heart. What's your, what agency are you with? Uh, State Water Resource Control. We, we, we should talk because this is going, the, the, new, the new fully cloud um, system is going live imminently. Um, and it brings, it brings, again, that idea of moving it into the cloud, the idea of not only bringing the cost down, I mean, that's important, but the idea that 
we could replicate it and share it across multiple agencies very quickly as opposed to doing one-offs. And then from the state of California standpoint, think about connecting those dots and being able to, to oversee, all right, wait, on a regional basis, I can actually see what kind of conservation or is happening or is not happening as opposed to one agency, one agency, one agency. And that is exactly sort of the design of it was to, to, to do that. Sanjay was saying, and I think Carlos were both saying, is like, think putting in, you know, think design, not simply development. And that's really what was put into this system was we're designing it for the future. Yeah, that would be a, a very powerful um, example. We should talk. Other, other questions, other challenges, other, other ideas. Um, yeah. Catherine, and this is, and Catherine, you're from, and I love the fact, Catherine is the CIO of the Southern California Association of Government, so one of our local partners here, it's great to kind of share. Catherine? Yeah, the, que the question was, should we be really looking to platforms or a platform to leverage across kind of everything? And the easy answer is, as a tech person and an, an industry person, the easy answer is, yes, of course, go buy that platform. Those platforms don't, you know, they exist in certain states. The approach and the strategy is absolutely start moving towards a platform approach. Um, what we always like to say, and just as a, a, a tech person, and I'm out there you know, globally looking at places where they've got technologies, you, know, you don't want to be locked in at either end of that spectrum of all we do is one-off everything, and it's costly, but at least I know what I'm getting for this calendar, for this mobile app. At the other end is, okay, we bought a, we bought a locked-down proprietary platform that we now have to do everything out of, and you know what? I can't get that level of customization to do. Where, where the real industry and where the market's going is that middle area of platformatizing certain areas. So like even our platform, we say, hey, great. The nice thing about it is if you really love your CRM system that you're using, and it's great and it's got data, plug the data in. You don't have to replicate. You don't have to redo it. But if you don't have it, maybe there's a way to, to build it in. So yes, kind of that idea of thinking platforms and services. Um, and I know it's for the CIOs, that's, a, you know, that's turning a battleship. But starting down that path, maybe picking the applications, the data sets that you can start to move into a platform, or maybe amenable to platforms. GIS, for instance, is a good one to just say, gosh, get it in a platform so that we can use it for everything we do instead of having 20 different GIS-based standalone applications. Yeah, absolutely. Other, yeah. Great, great, great question. I mean, and it's, it's, it is, you, you are at sort of, that's the leading edge stuff as you move to cloud and platform is, how do we guarantee that we're gonna get performance as we start to, what start to become kind of big, heavy, complex? Um, one is the technology is catching up and is there very, very, very quickly. Um, second is, and actually Ballard Group, Marini, others here, there are all sorts of interesting new testing optimization services focusing specifically on cloud and mobile as opposed to the old style. So you can do all that testing and you can be assured, wow, it holds up under this many users over this much time with this much data um, pumping in. And then actually the way that most of your, certainly your public and your big clouds are being architected these days, you, you should be able to, as a customer, say, I have to make sure that if I'm moving to the cloud, that your cloud will, will hold up and will be there and perform when I hit my peaks. Which again, government services do tend to kind of go like this. You don't get that nice level. You got to be ready. So um, you, can, you, can, you can do enough of those assurances beforehand, because it is one of those fears as people move there. Wow, it sounds great, it works well. How do I get that performance? And I would suggest that we're right at that tipping point where the performance of the cloud, data, mobile thing are actually better than 
your standalone um, client server apps. That's, that's really kind of where we are in those, those tipping points because I'd rather put my money on these companies that are spending billions of dollars in research and optimization than my local shop that has a really neat kind of little app, but where are they going to go with this? That's a great question and something sort of thinking about that digital strategy and the technical stuff. Other, other questions, other comments? Yeah, and that's, that's usually, um, and I'm, I guess I am sort of an evangelist for this because this is where, and not only from the technology and the industry standpoint, that's what I come from, I come from government. I'm not a computer scientist. Um, the future of government council. This is about getting government to be more efficient, better engaging. And security is one of the biggest fears out there, absolutely, and it's not to poo-poo it. Um, but when you talk to the security experts, the leaders in this, they'll always give you the same answer. Cloud, mobile, it is all as secure as anything else. And as more and more of the world moves to cloud and mobile, guess where more of the security research dollars are going to be spent? Um, and on that point, and this is not at all a plug, it's just interesting uh, because it came out, I had this, this, this version, I think it's the October version of government technology, has in it, I think like 12 or 10 um, startup companies that are exclusively focusing on cloud security. Um, you may want to take a look. There's some really neat stuff, and it is different than sort of the traditional security. But th that, I, I know that's kind of a pat answer, but it's like your car. Somebody wants to steal that darn thing. They spend enough money, try hard enough, they're going to steal it. But boy, can you put in a lot of steps to make it hard for them to steal it. So it's the same thing with the cloud. The cloud security often gets sort of, oh my goodness, because we see in the news every day the, the next starlet whose photos, and yet even they come back and say, that's not the cloud, that was the mobile device itself. Um, so I think, again, that's part of that idea of we're all in the government industry to make sure we're not just whipping something out, we are testing and making sure it complies with um, security, device management, ID management. Um, but I think it, it, it is there. And again, the rest of the world is going faster than we are. So that's where all of the security focus is going to be in the next decade. But it's, a, it's absolutely something to keep an eye on. Other questions, comments? Um, I, think, I, think there's, I think there's another one coming in this room. But I'm, I'm more than willing to, Tim Garza, any, any last, any, and, and I, I got to call this out because it was Tim working with Tim at the beginning coming up with the idea of let's do something fun and interesting like jumping the mobile shark and it took and it's carried through the last couple of months. So thank you. Thank you all. Um, I'm here. We're here. Go forth into the digital world. <laughs>